So what PS Health is really doing to a large degree is what I call both delivering the technology that is allowing you know the pathways, touch points, collection uh, aspects. When I say collection, I'm really saying how do we measure health outcomes at a beginning stage to assess a risk, then what are we doing along that pathway to determine you know, how do we uh, deal with a high risk versus a differentiation of a, of a low risk and what are the touch points that that clinician or care support worker needs to do along with the delivery of drugs along that chain. And so our solution is kind of uh, ensuring that the work flows, that it's capturing all of the information along that. But more importantly, I think for being successful, it's, it's really about joining up what I would call the patient journey from the perspective of the clinician to potentially a third party to actually the patient and the information that they're being able to see and access. Um, but from a pharma perspective and when they're looking at adherence and compliance programs one of the things that's a big differentiator in actually um, you know, positioning one drug over another, and often this is down to how much is the cost of the drug and what can you, you know, do and how do you want to differentiate a generic, is how do you really increase the funnel? And the funnel typically is within the public sector, meaning the hospital. How are they getting enrolled? And often there is a conflict of interest or perceived conflict of interest between the doctors and the nurses and actually putting them on t some type of program uh, to begin with and making sure that they stay alongside that patient alongside the journey. So in this context, what we're doing with both pharmaceuticals and home health care providers is allowing those clinicians and nurses within a hospital environment to both enroll and to see on an ongoing basis elements of what's happening with that patient once they actually put them on this program. So what I call this is almost like the window of transparency of service beyond the acute setting, yeah? And joining up the clinician to whatever's happening in between uh, a service provision and the patient, yeah? So on that side, clinicians can have full visibility of the patient, and then pharmaceutical may or might may not determine, depending on that, do they want a home health care provider sitting in the middle delivering the drugs, uh, overseeing a compliance program, or are they indeed actually sitting in the middle of that? And there are some conflicts of interest around data protection and why a third party is often there. And so from that perspective, our solutions are driving that whole compliance program of you know onboarding, risk assessment, and then depending on that risk assessment, there might be different care pathways that uh, somebody takes to manage that particular person on that particular drug of that particular therapy area. And then what our solutions are also doing is saying, what are all the touch points? And then risk assessing it towards the back end of that. Are they still compliant? When did they become non-compliant? When did they stop taking the drug? What are the activities that we had to do between uh, all of these events to say we've moved them from a high to a medium? So that you're really getting, at the end of the day, what I call measurable data to say how are we performing as a group, how are we performing as an individual, and what's the real cost of uh, what I would call return on investment. And on a case-by-case -case and rolled up, what's the health outcome? measurable, quantifiable health outcomes. Where the patient kind of comes in this, and I think this is where it's getting very interesting because there's a lot of mobile apps where patients can view information. We're not really about just viewing information. We're about joining up what I call the healthcare continuum. From the acute setting to potentially um, a third party, it could even be on um, uh, the community setting to the patient and so that all those stakeholders have a view of what's going on with that patient because there's different elements of care actually happening across that continuum and that's what we're really delivering. So on a patient side, the mobile aspect is such a great one because it's convenient, they can see bits and pieces of their own information when certain things are happening next 
you know, if they can see, you know, that they need to respond to something, they can actually see that potentially they're a medium risk and that they need to be doing things and what's happening outside of that around the care. But more importantly is than, the, than just the patient side, it's really about those clinicians and understanding what's going on with that patient. And if something does then get flagged into a high, to a high risk area, how do they support and intervene as appropriate? Well, I think where we really sit is all focused around meaningful data. There's no point in joining up stakeholders if you can't drive to a meaningful outcome. And to me, where I see the whole healthcare, not just pharma, but actually how they're procuring healthcare in the future, and it's starting to happen here in the UK. We've got projects and clients that are delivering large scale government contracts on this, is where payment is being driven by outcome. So the ability to evidence what type of care that you're doing, what is the quality of that care, what are your interventions and activities, how much time are you spending, and at what point are you reducing the risk level from a high, medium, or to a low, and then being able to quantify that by a contract, by a particular group of stakeholders, meaning a trust, and down to a case is becoming incredibly relevant. We purchase based on activity. Yeah, which is completely the wrong focus because you're driving more activity versus actually better outcomes. So you're getting paid on episode, episodic pay versus outcome pay. And it kind of can be counterproductive to actually a health outcome. I think the interesting thing where we'll be moving to, and this is a longer journey, not a short journey, and it's more thoughtful to get there is um, really uh, how do pharmaceuticals look at value-based pricing. Yeah, To me that's the uh, end goal and it's going to be a long journey. And the only way you can get to value-based pricing is to understand on an aggregate what that drug is actually doing to increase people's health outcomes. Yeah, And to a large degree not only is pharma doing that, private sector, because they're more motivated around the profit line and understanding that, are moving in that direction as well. Yeah, which is really understanding what are we doing? Is it good enough? Can we do it better? And are there different ways of delivering it, i.e. face-to-face, remote, um, to drive a, a different outcome around health and cost profile? So what happens in the farm is they do a great job around kind of um, early stage trials and, 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 and understanding the data around that, but in a real life situation that's very, very difficult to collect, almost impossible, yeah. And who actually is the best person to collect that, yeah. In some ways you would say um, some of the insurance organizations like Bupa, for example, who delivers private medical, have a lot of information around their claims data than perhaps any other organization in the, in the UK um, because health within the UK setting with the Department of Health and how the NHS is geared around data collection is very problematic. Yeah, so the panacea is really driving down to um, understanding the cost of care and intervention. Yeah, and the only way you can really acutely do that is via some type of technology solution. Um, that's looking around some type of care pathway and what's going on. You know, for pharma, it's an interesting time because, you know, they've been in a space where they've really been selling drugs, yeah? And there's this move to kind of service provision and perhaps influencing care pathways and service redesign, particularly within the public sector health, yeah. And to a large degree to do that, pharma is often working with home health providers in the private sector to help them deliver some of that. So I think for pharma, there's a lot of experimenting going on about what model works, how, does, how do we actually get our own return on investment in this model, 
Um, and I think they have to look very carefully at which drug components are going to have the biggest um, success criteria for them joining up some elements of this. But clearly, the, from a data perspective and from a, a health profiling, I can see them playing very, very well in this space because they have the commercial uh, negotiation and they have a meaningful reason to, to play in this space.